salve pessoal, Nodolaki, o treinador de Red Canids. Hoje eu vou conversar sobre o Worlds 2019. É meio prediction pelo tournament. So with Worlds coming, it always comes down to predictions. Who do we think is going to win? How will Brazil do this year? And today I'm going to discuss a little bit about that. First of all, I'm going to discuss about the plans. The very interesting part for a lot of us in Brazil, because that's where Flamengo is. They're in Group D, which in my opinion is the group of death. But there's a huge positive to this group, because being matched with the Korean team inside your group, it means that you cannot face them in the best of five to go through the real tournament. Which means Flamengo doesn't have to do much, they just have to beat Turkey. Sure, Turkey has been the, the black beast for Brazil over the last few years, but I think that they might have a chance because of the way the game is being played. I think a lot is gonna come down to how Goku will perform. Because if you look at Royal Youth, they have a Korean in the mid laner who is one of their best players, and they also have Pilot in the bot lane, which will be there to counterpart into BRTT. And I'll be honest, I could talk about Dominant Gaming, but I just think in this group, unless the nerves show up or something, they should be able to be the team to come out on top very easily in this group. And for me, I actually think if they go on to be matched in Group D with Liquid, they could just go out straight up to quarterfinals and maybe make a semi-final run depending on the drop. Now, if we go to Group A, we have Clutch, Unicorns of Love, and Mammoth from Oceania. I think this is probably the weakest group of all. And I think for any team that is playing, they should be hoping to go through to face Clutch. And they want Clutch to become a first seed out of their group. And I think they should be able to accomplish that. Like, NA has not been the strongest region, but Clutch has been on a very uphill momentum for the last few months. Now, if we go to group B, which is very interesting because Splice is part of this group and Splice plays a very particular game. They're called the 35 minutes plus team, which means if you can allow yourself to play the game faster, and you don't totally rely on your jungle to take lead against them because they're a very good team at playing around it, teams could surprise them. Like DFM, which if I remember correctly is from Japan, has been going on the uphill. They've been 4-2 their last MSI. Every year Japan has been making progress a region. So in my opinion, Japan could be the one surprising this group. I, I think Splice could be a danger, a danger. And that would mean a lot for EU because when I watch Europe, for me it's G2 Fnatic and everyone else. And I think this world will really showcase, does EU even have a third seed? And that's what I'm waiting for towards this group. Now we go to group C, which is a very close group. We have Hong Kong Attitude, which I think will go through. And then I think Loki will also be the other team to go through, but we never know because Mega is a team that went to MSI, they are improving. And I think this region could maybe be able to take games off, but then it's not about taking games off. It's about finishing top two in your group and then beating the top one from another group. So now let's move on to the main stage. Sure, the groups are not finalized, but I can already go with my bold prediction that I don't think a single Korean team will make it out of group. Maybe Griffin, has a chance because they're against Cloud9 but as everyone knows Cloud9 has their aura around them when they go to world sneaky just cosplays as something new and then they just superhero mode and they breeze through and make it to quarterfinal semi-final every year we have group a which has g2 as part of it and that's a very interesting group for everyone because when you have griffin and g2 in the same group for me you have fireworks you have two teams which you never know which team to expect you don't know how Griffin will do it the international stage, but they're usually a team that can find consistency. But how will this consistency go against a team as aggressive as G2? It will be very interesting to see. As for C9, they're C9. So I just have no idea. And I hope as an NA representative that they'll be able to make it out somehow. And I really want G2 to make it out because G2, in my opinion, is one of the most formidable team to watch into best of five. Now let's move to group B, which has in this group, in my opinion, one of the top two favorites for Worlds, FPX. FPX destroyed China completely. They have probably two of the best solo laners and one of the most consistent bot lane. They have Doen B who plays more champion than there is champion in League of Legends. But you know that this team will bring you, in my opinion, the highest level of micro play in the entire world tournament with G2. And I think FPX as a team evolved so much in a direction that they are, for me, probably the top contender for this world. And then out of this group, the second position will be very up in the air because we have Vietnam and Taiwan in this group, which means we could also have Dominant in this group. 
which can only be in group B and D because they have Korean teams in group A and C. So Dalvin for me is Korea's last hope maybe. Like Nick Griffin might make it out, like I don't know, we'll see. In this group it will really depend, I think the second seed is up for grab. I think this is one of the most open second seed with group D, but good luck stealing first seed from FPX. Group C, as everyone saw, like, you guys should have seen my face, it was like, I was speechless when I saw the group draw. I saw SKT, Fnatic, and RNG all being in the same group, which for me is almost three top one seed in this tournament. I think Fnatic's play style is very interesting. So for me, Fnatic is a huge chance. And then we have SKT, who I think lost one series since MSI in a best of three. But then does that show that Korea is getting weaker again? I have no idea. But I do think that they will have a very, very hard time in this group because if Rockstar comes out swinging, like he did versus G2, I could see SKT just dying left and right before their jungler is even done with his camps. And this is what makes a clash of style, I think, from region to region. I think Europe just plays, not chaotic, but plays a very fast League of Legends. I think we could even have a new EU final in some world, as crazy as it sounds. And now let's move to Group D, which is the dream group. Nothing can be better for Team Liquid. It's like it was scripted or something by Riot if they wanted it to be out of group. Just put Liquid with IG, who's been struggling, and then put them in a group with HQ, which is second seed LMS, which means there's a lot of space to beat them. But the only danger is Dominant Gaming could come out of nowhere, and then IG could wake up. And then if you wake up a bear, if you poke a bear in Canada, it's pretty scary, so be careful not to do that. So we'll have to see which IG shows up. And now what's one of the most interesting thing for World's Patch is that Yumi got completely destroyed. Her Q just got murdered, which means one of the most oppressive support in bot lane is gone. Karma got nerfed a little bit for solo laners, which means she becomes more of a predictable pick towards bot lane if she is to be picked. So a lot of what Riot did is to nerf some of the flex picks, Silas is one of those champions too, which means if you nerf Silas and Karma already, it becomes a lot harder to flex around the map, which means the less flex there are, the more predictable the draft becomes. The more predictable the draft becomes, the more standardized the meta is going to be, and then the teams that understand it best will be able to abuse it and go through onto winning. So, to finish, if I had to make a guess on who's going to be the world champion this year, I think the title is going back to China and FPX is bringing everything home. Final match, obrigado a todos. Pela atenção. E boa sorte, Flamengo. Estou com vocês.